Welcome back, everyone. This is Danielle eidenberg Napi, one of the senior ombuds at OEO, and I'm here with Sam Blazina, also a senior ombuds. Um, a lot of people joined our webinar, and if you didn't have a chance to listen to it, you're welcome to view it at the OEO YouTube channel. We received a number of questions towards the end of it, and so Sam and I will um, address those questions at this time. What happens if the school IEP team and the parent disagree on the student's transition plan? As part of the IEP, the parent has the right to disagree with the school about the transition plan. There are formal processes available to families in this situation. We'll, uh, however, there are steps to take to amicably resolve the disagreement. The parent can request a separate time to be to address what part of the plan needs revisited. This way, there is time for everyone to reflect and discuss possible solutions. The parent could do some research to understand the role that schools play in the decision-making process and where the student may be impacted by that decision. In this case, how will the plan impact the student's ability to successfully transition out of school? Discuss your concerns with the school members of the team. Try to reach an agreement. If a decision can't be mutually agreed upon, make it clear that you do not agree and some of the options that you have is to bring an advocate who understands the process to help guide the conversations with the team. There are organizations out there such as PAVE who have advocates who can actually attend the meeting with you. You can contact the special education parent liaison, Scott, at OSPI for a better understanding of school processes. Um, you could also open a case with our office for some informal facilitation and conversations with the school. Formal options would include uh, mediation with sound options, with OSBI, all this information you can find at the OSBI website. Also, taking another step further would be a citizen's complaint. Citizen's complaint is about a 90-day process. It does not cost you anything. The OSBI would investigate the concern, determine whether or not there is uh, some room for uh, some action plans to be put in place. And finally, but not least, the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction's due process. Again, all this information can be found at their webpage. Thank you. Um, and the second question is, what if the student would benefit more from additional academic education from the high school and the high school is refusing to provide that education? It's a little bit similar, the response, Danielle, from the previous question. Uh, but I would also add that the transition plan should include a discussion about core curriculum and subject areas. So if there is a disagreement to sort of follow those steps that I previously recommended. Thank you. And what happens when the student is a senior and does not need life skills transition, but needs more vocational education classes at the college level, but the school district will not facilitate this? Understanding procedural safeguards as well as the role school plays will help in guiding conversations and possible solutions here. The, you can look up the Washington Administrative Codes. It describes the need for collaboration. In this situation, bringing expertise to the table would be helpful. The Division of Vocational Rehabilitation is required to take a role in the transition process with schools and the student. Um, you could, uh, we refer to it a little bit in the PowerPoint, so you can follow that, uh, some of that information. IDEA also requires that students participate in the decision-making process as well. Um, so looking at the various programming that is out there, um, you can also go to our website. We have a lot of information on transition, transition toolkit, and perhaps some of that information may be helpful here. Um, Washington administrative codes are actually very easy to read uh, when we think about, oh my gosh, the codes and stuff would be really, you know, legal language, but it's really bullet form. It describes exactly what transition services should look like. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, can students attend other school districts transition programs without moving if their own school district does not offer a program that fits the student? And if so, what is the process for this? 
the school would have to agree choice schools, which means school that's out of boundary, are not obligated to enroll students and provide services. The issue here it's partially is funding. Funding goes to the school of residence. Schools can choose, uh, however, to contract out for a specific reason in our programming. If the school disagrees, the burden would be on the student or guardian, if that is the case, to demonstrate that the school cannot provide the student with a free and appropriate public education. Uh, back to question one, uh, you know, try to really express your concern, try to come to some kind of an agreement. If you can, bring some informal choices into the, or uh, have conversations, um, or even go into a more of a formal, if you believe that the school cannot provide your student with the services that he or she needs. Thank you. And the next question is, if a student has well-documented develop, developmental delays so that their academic progress has been slow, but then they demonstrate an interest and aptitude at the end of high school, how does that student secure the academics they need if the school district just wants to push them into transition based on their disabilities? A transition plan should be based on students' needs. It can be amended at any time to make adjustments. If a team does not agree on a program, perhaps a discussion of a new education evaluation for the student, independent education evaluation, we, this really the idea here, and I think we sort of prefaced that at the presentation, is this has to be based on the student's needs, his or her disability alone. So it, it, that's, that's the really important factor here, Danielle. Mm -hmm. um, this question is, um, typical 18-year-olds decide their future with their parents without any interference from the school. So why is that not the case with special education students? Why does the IEP team have a say? When the student turns the age of majority, which is 18, he or she have the to consent to parent involvement in their education. This applies to st all students, regardless if they have an IEP or not. This is law under FERPA which is the, um, it's, it's a law that protects privacy. If the student has cognitive delays and it's not able to make informed choices, a guardianship or educational power of attorney can be established. A conversation needs to take place around the age of 17 to avoid misunderstandings and communication when the student turns 18. Most importantly here, IDEA obligates the school to make this a team effort, a collaborative effort. So not only we have the, the, the question about the age of majority, but what it also is about having this team come together in sort of a consensus and in conversation. So this is what the difference is between a typical 18 year old that doesn't fall under those guidelines and obligations as opposed to an 18 year old who's under the provisions of an IEP. And the next one, what about providing assistance to support the non-college bound student? Utilizing the DVR services through the pre-employment contract, which I spoke of it earlier, so that the student can engage in community and work experience off campus with initial supports into accessibilities and needs. And also to determine if student qualifies for services with the Disabilities Administration, research your community to find out who provides supported employment or a job coaching support. Discuss what success means for the student. Students may not be content or may be content with a volunteer opportunity in the community or engaging in social functions. Look for other expertise in your community to assist the team with ideas and availability of services. Thank you, and then the final question that was sent to us is, if a student has fourth grade le reading comprehension and math levels, can they still go to college? Or if not, what are their options? Setting realistic goals and aligning them with availability of programs and services is important. Please, uh, there again, uh, do a little bit of research what's out there in terms of programs that are college programs offering special needs curriculum uh, with campus experience. This could facilitate future opportunities for the young adult life. Uh, these are great questions. They're uh, not real simple answers here, folks. Um, I, what I like to do is uh, 
thank you uh, for your time today. There is a, I like to show where we're going to play a video to demonstrate that students have different needs and different interests. In this video, students with disabilities share their future goals and talk about how transition planning is helping them reach their goals. My name is Clara Pigeon. I'm 18 years old. I might like to be a teacher like my aunt or coming out also like doing hairstyles, hair, so maybe I'll become a hairstylist. My forename is William Allen Buzina and what I like to do best is uh, to help people and make some food and I want to, to be a mechanic for myself. I'm Amanda Kepler. I like to go tubing. I like hot chocolate. I like music. I like movies. I would love to go to VSF or like Seattle Film Institute or um, one of the schools in LA. And then I have fifth, and when we go out of the classroom to do different things, and you know, when we go to Valley View, and we basically just go with the kids, and we just you know play with them a lot. Then, so yeah. Actually, I I like uh, uh, recycling. Well, I do mostly paper and some copper boxes. I like my multimedia class. I can make videos and stuff. We're doing a documentary, and I'm going to a concert and I'm going to make the documentary, the concert video. And I'm also taking a cheap class. I go to uh, Hope After School, like Learning Lab. I get help there on, on um, my multimedia stuff. I got a scribe for my writing. She wrote what I said. Actually, they can help me with my chores that I do. Well, I do mostly helping with the bathrooms, and I, I can organize some things in the kitchen. So basically, um, I don't really have a plan yet until I graduate. I'm probably going to think about it when I'm a little, like, 21 or older, so I can think about it more often. So, yeah. Uh... I did graduate last year, and uh, what I like to do best when I turn 21, uh, I want to, to help people to uh, get things done a little faster. First, I want to get my diploma. I've technically graduated. The school district pays for my schooling, so they don't give me my diploma until I graduate from Highline. My aunt is a teacher at Connecticut because I want to be kind of like her to like see what different, like, you know, homework assignments and see what grades, what comes through, and I just want to see how it goes. Um, I did talk to a person, I think, when I was at swimming about giving me a course in teaching for Spanish and French, but, and, but yeah. Well, uh, I got some advice from a friend and that I could help people to communicate because uh, I want to communicate with them to see how well they're doing and to make sure they behave and <laughs> make sure all people should communicate with others to learn to, to help them to learn the process. One of my good friends, he is a actor. He lives in LA. And that's how I got interested in it. And I just like watched watched B roll and everything. B roll is how they like put the film together and stuff. 
So I watched that. People would think it was boring, but I think it's interesting. I did attend a meeting for high school to reach those goals, and my goals were I went to one meeting with my parents. I talked to the special ed director of school, and he talked to me about the Y AIM test, which is something for graduation requirements for me as a senior, and how I needed to do that, able to graduate and become whatever I choose. Yeah, couple. Well, uh, they telling me about a lot of things that I want to do, like uh, working with people, working with others that I want to help with, and some other things that I want to do, and they tell me that I to give them help of telling others what to do. Yes, we did. They said, um, you got to work hard to get there. I went to one, I think it was a job shadow in beauty school. It was Bluestone Academy, and they asked me to come down there just to, like, see the hair stuff and the products they want me to do and stuff. So basically, I just went down there, and there was this one girl who was down there asking help for her hair color. So I asked this one person to ask what color she wanted. So basically, I just went down there and had fun. Actually, I, I did get my foot, foot hair loss. Permit done. Uh, I got my job about uh, last week. What I started. My job is to do food to other people, to the houses. The Ren School District has a program called the Transition Program, where uh, people like me like go and practice skills. I had multimedia. Uh, we had multimedia in our high school. So I knew how to use the stuff to make film and stuff. After I take um, production and multimedia, I'm going to take script writing. Again, we would like to thank and close today a reminder to all the viewers that the recordings can be found at our OEO link uh, YouTube channel. And thank you for your time and have a fabulous day.